Hello and welcome to the Freedom of Flight Museum here at the Joplin Airport. My name is Ernie Trumbly. I am the curator of the Freedom of Flight Museum that you see here. And today I want to tell you all about some of our many exhibits that we have highlighting some of the activities and events that happened here in our local area. Okay, now if you want to follow me, we'll go look at some of these exhibits. Okay, here we are in the main hallway of the Freedom of Flight Museum. Today we're going to talk about one particular point in our Cold War history, and that is our Missouri Cold War history, our state history. Now the Cold War is a time when the United States and Russia, well, they just weren't getting together. They were getting along very well, let's say. So it was kind of a fearful time. A lot of people feared since both countries possess nuclear weapons, that an accidental nuclear war could start. A really bad time for people. Now, your grandma and grandpa volunteered their time to come out and participate in this and watch the skies for enemy bombers. And they were known as local heroes. They belonged to the Ground Observer Corps. Another part of our Cold War history is that the state of Missouri also possessed many hidden underground and very deep missile silos. These were nuclear missiles, big missiles that carried nuclear warheads that were aimed at Russia in case they attacked us. Also along with the missiles, which you can see up here, we have other Cold War items that Missouri participated in, and that was radar sites and defensive nuclear missiles and nuclear armed interceptor aircraft. In this part of the museum we have the Alan Shirley exhibit on early aviation beginning with our pioneers of flight, the Wright brothers, and continuing all the way down the hall here. We include Lindbergh, the Zeppelin, and we end up here at the end of World War II. In this part of the exhibit, we have two of our local history uh, exhibits. On this side, if you can see over here, the Doolittle Raiders. And did you know that we have one of our local residents in Webb City who participated in this raid? Likewise, over here for the Tuskegee Airmen, the Red Tail Squadrons, we have one of our local Carthage residents who is a member of that unit. Okay, here we have some of our local airline mementos from the uh, Joplin Airport. And back behind me here, we have some of our displays on our local aviation and missile history from down in Neosho, Missouri. And this is all about Rocketdyne plant and uh, the missiles they produced for our space program. This is our special display covering Dick Rutan and Jenna Yeager's flight around the world in a Voyager aircraft. You can see the picture down here. That flight was unrefueled, non-stop flight around the world. And this display was brought in, donated by Diane Herman, who is one of our museum members. Oh, hi, E.T. How are you? Here in this display shelf, we have a few of the items from downstairs and what we have a, a part of the museum that's called the Aerospace Science and Technology Center, what we just call the ASTC. And here we have some items that uh, represent different parts of the aircraft. And these are all parts that you might be able to actually pick up and handle if you wish, uh, with, of course, obvious safety concerns. Okay, now we're down here in what we call the Aerospace Science and Technology Center. One of our really cool exhibits is the aircraft ejection seat. And what is an ejection seat? Let me tell you all about it. Okay, here I am sitting in the ejection seat. Now this thing actually came out of the back seat of an F-4 Phantom fighter. 
A really cool little device to get to set in. Now this thing is very, very powerful seat, very dangerous. It'll take up to a 300 pound object and blow you up to 250 feet in the air, just like that. It is a ride of your life. Now what we're gonna show you is that the ejection seat is a life-saving item in the aircraft. If you have any kind of a problem in the aircraft, you get hit by the enemy, or you have a fire or something goes wrong and you have to get out of the aircraft and the fighter, this is your only way out. And what I'm going to demonstrate to you now is how to do that. So hang on to your seats. Now, we have two ways of doing this. We can either go between our legs for this little device down here, or we can reach up and pull the primary handles. You can see behind me. You reach and pull those over our head, and this is what happens. Okay, man, that was one scary ride, I'll tell you. But here we are back in the ASTC. Now, if you come out here for a visit, not only will you get to set in this seat, but you'll also get to try on the helmet and the G-suit, or the gravity-defying suit, and light suit itself. And get the, you won't get to go for a ride, unfortunately, in the seat, but you can get set in it and see how it feels. It's not the most comfortable thing you've ever set in. And here we are in the B-143 Stimulator. This is one of the most fun aspects and displays that we have down here. This is uh, an enclosed cockpit. And right now I'm sitting in the pilot seat. We have the co-pilot seat right beside me. And one thing, uh, of course, you've probably seen most of these instruments in your Learn to Fly video that we have. One thing that video does not show, that's what we have in the back here. Like in an actual bomber, we would have an electronic warfare officer behind me, and on the opposite side would be the bomb navigator. Uh, we're gonna skip around and get a better view so I can show you the inside here a little bit better. Okay, here we are inside. You're looking at this front instrument panel, which actually is a DC-9 instrument panel, an actual aircraft passenger jet instrument panel that we're looking at here. Now what we have on both sides, both for the pilot and the co-pilot, are redundant instruments, of course, as, you, as you've seen in the uh, video that we had. Uh, all the different instruments. Here we have all the different instruments, engine instruments, and uh, navigation and radar and communications. And of course, you saw in the video, we had the throttles. Unlike that for the little propeller-driven aircraft, we actually have throttles here. And we see those manipulated by my hand. And these are actual, if we push forward, the more we go forward, the more we increase the air into the engines, the RPM, and the better increased thrust that we get. So there's maximum thrust for the engines, and of course we pull them back to idle here. As we can see, we have a panel for any kind of instruments failure or systems failures that will light up and tell us what's going on our weather radar, and of course up above here we have all of our systems and instruments for starting engines and utility systems, oil and hydraulics, etc. And we also have the control stick. Going back and forth that we saw in the video, and your rudder pedals down here at your feet. Everything is just like an actual aircraft, only it's a lot of fun that everybody, including adults, can get in and play in. Have lots of fun. Check out the museum's bomb room. Missiles and rockets.